What's up, you guys? Welcome back into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. And today we have a guest on the show that I think is about to actually break his boss's records of most appearance on our podcast. We've got Darby Allen on the show back again. Darby, how are you doing, sir? Honestly, I can't remember being here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last so time we that, I was like, I've been here before. The last time we ran into you was in Nashville um, at uh, Dynamite. Um, you you met Battle Son backstage, so uh, your Battle Son. No, yeah, I'm well, not. You Battle met my Sun, kid. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you met my you met my uh, my six year old at the time. He uh, big fan saying. of yours. And uh, before we do get started, the, the whole thing. Uh, he's a big fan of wrestling, and I told him that I was interviewing you today, and he's like, "Please make sure you show Darby this, and I want you to know that he has your action figure." <laughs> Oh, that's very uh, sick. <laughs> and I had to take it away from him because he's like, please make sure. He's already lost the skateboard that came with it, but he found a coffin and a sledgehammer. And he's like, Car Darby likes coffins, so show him the coffin. And I was like, I'm not going to show I the do. coffin. I do, yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, supporting and getting that, that action figure. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. With all due respect to the TNT Championship, how does it feel to be introduced as a world champion in AEW as being one half of the world tag team champions? Oh, it's, it's amazing. And the fact that I was never setting out to be a tag wrestler, like in my career, I never even thought of being a tag wrestler. Mm -hmm. So let alone being a tag wrestler with Sting, that's um, effing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. And I couldn't have had a better partner. Absolutely. And of course, a lot of people were excited with when you two tagged together. And, you know, it, it's kind of bittersweet coming up. AEW Revolution coming to us live Sunday, March 3rd from the Greensboro Coliseum with the marquee announcement of this being Sting's final match. Of course, there's still some tickets to remain. AEWTix.com. Or, of course, you can watch it live from home on pay per view, Bleacher Report Live, and in the US and Triller TV Plus internationally. Um, what are some of the ideas that you had in your head about how Sting's final match could play out? Uh, it scares me because mm -hmm. I, uh, <laughs> you know, he, this is the very last match, so there's nothing left to lose. And I, I think someone might go to the hospital. I think, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a wild fight, and I know I'll stop at nothing to make sure that it's probably one of the most memorable matches that he's ever had. So, um, yeah, man, people are always gonna remember this. If you crap the bed on the last match, people are always gonna remember that. So, uh, it's my uh, <laughs> mission statement right here that I am going to make sure this man's career ends with the respect it deserves. And if I have to sacrifice myself, so be it. A sacrifice must be made. <laughs> right. So, we'll see. Yeah. Well, and, you know, go, heading into the, the final match on this road we're on, you know, you guys did become tag team champs. And I think both of you would say, you know, wasn't really on your radar. Um, this marks Sting's first and only championship within AEW. Um, what does it mean to you to be a part of his final championship within the world of professional wrestling? And, um, you know, what does a post-championship um, victory party look like for Sting and Darby? Like, what do you guys go out for pizza? Like, what do, you, what do you guys do for big, big events and stuff to celebrate? Well, when we when we won the tag championships, uh, I didn't really get to see him because I was in the back getting stitched up with my head. So by the time I was done, he was long gone. So I was like, there's our after parties. He yeah. spent bloody. Um, Thanks, but. Bucks. I, I think I think the the whole thing with you know Sting's final as the tag champion and everything like that it's awesome because he was never supposed to come to AEW as a wrestler it was more like mm -hmm. an ambassador type role and the fact that he uh, took my word and took a chance on me when I convinced him to come back to wrestling and actually get in the ring and you know he just. You never want to get out there and everyone's like, oh, he should have stayed, you know, he should have stayed out. But he got back and then he meant he's he's going crazier than ever. Never in his career was he jumping off the 15 foot balconies. No, no. Nope. So let's just let's just wait till you're 60 plus years old to start that. Uh, it's awesome. You know, I'm very, I'm very grateful for the whole experience. The man is wild. His work ethic is insane. He busts his ass more than some of the young guys do. So uh, everybody on the roster watching this, step your game up because Sting is a, 
<laughs> is the outperforming you guys, and he has nothing to prove. He could have right. just came to AEW and rode off into the sunset playing the greatest hits, but no, man, like he's got, he's just showing everybody that you can't phone it in. And that's awesome for a guy like me, because every time I go out there, it feels like the very first time I walk out there and I have everything to prove. I have that chip on my shoulder every single night. So, um, yeah, I love learning from the best. Absolutely. Well, and it's, for sure. it's like for, for me being a fan since, since these days, you know, he he probably still has enough gas in the tank. I mean, he he could still continue doing that. I mean, he's performing at a very high level right now. Um, that's the kind of surreal thing about it all. I think is just that he's he doesn't look his age in the ring, you know. Yeah, he uh, he told me he looked at me and he said, "Hey, you let me know when it's time to retire." Because I don't want to stay along too, I don't want to stay around too long, and then almost be a parody of myself. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like with everything, man, like we got nothing left to prove in AEW. We did the Wembley, you know, we won the tag championships. We, you know, we've had so much amazing matches with some of the best tag teams like FTR, and mm -hmm. it is just like l let's just end it right now, like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was – he felt comfortable with it and, like, it's time. So uh, it's yeah. going to be it's gonna be bittersweet once it all happens because I almost forget what life was like before Sting. He's been yeah. just there every single day. I've learned to, like, know him so much outside of the ring, which is, like, the most important part is that that's the thing that fans don't get to see is our relationship outside of the ring. And uh, the fact that he's done everything there is to do in wrestling and he has, like, no ego. He's not, he doesn't have a big head. He's not arrogant. He's the nicest, humblest guy. And I've met so many people that have done far less than he ever will that have <laughs> the biggest head and the biggest ego. And I'm just like, screw you guys. <laughs> like, stay <laughs> humble. Like, but how why is it so hard to be a normal person like why is it so hard to like stay humble right. and kind why do you have to have this carny ass atmosphere about you like trying to backstab people because that promo i cut last night talking about family i meant every word i said of that you know the fame we chase the spotlight the material things like everything but when you're on your deathbed and then you realize what was really important i wish more people had that because they just they're living in this fake ass world of just like backstabbing mm -hmm. each other for what, for what? Like mm -hmm. so you can buy a new boat. Like I don't, I really have right. no clue. I'm just sick of the carny shit. And the fact that sting has done everything there is to do in wrestling and has no ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, the example. That's the example we need for the next generation of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You don't have to grow up trying to screw each other over. So exactly. Yeah. Well, speaking about uh, Dynamite this past Wednesday, um, the promo, a lot of people were talking about you and Sting. Um, you know, just incredible mic work from both of you. A lot of people are saying that could be one of Sting's best promos of all time, especially after the month he's had in the last few weeks. Um, what is it like being that close to someone delivering a promo like that, knowing the gravity of everything that's going on right now? The fact that he wanted to talk about it is like you know i i feel like he he's just like i, I just want to show the world like what i'm going through and and just like once we started rolling and i said my piece and then it was all him i uh, kind of just closed my eyes and listened and was taking it all in because um the fact that he was talking so much from the heart and I feel like the whole realization of not just his career ending, but his life ending, you know, like mm -hmm. real life, you know, cause I, I'm going to speak right now. I'm still in that stage of my life where I feel like I'm going to live forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, yeah. you know, so um, he, he, it's like, it's just really seeing what's most important in life and to hear that from him and, it's just like, man, it's a, uh, it's wild to be a part of this whole thing, but just let the man speak from the heart. And I try to like stay out of it and just let him be in the spotlight after I said my piece. And that's all I want is I don't, 
I don't want to take anything away from him. I just want this to be about him. So, right. For sure. And of course, uh, you know, it, it stings last match at AEW revolution. And, uh, the question I guess I have for you is, you know, after this is all said and done, once we're all done with this, how do you plan to honor Sting and your legacy together after he hangs his boots up and you're back out there on your own? I'm going to get a big ass scorpion tattoo on my face. <laughs> is nice. that for real? Is that? No, no, no. Oh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say, I bet you. you. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say, I bet um, you he's thrilled about that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's going to be really interesting, you know, after that, because I forgot what life was like. <laughs> Uh, before Sting, you know, he's just always been there now. And um, that's where I'm kind of going on that vision quest after he hangs up the boots and go climb Mount Everest and kind of remind myself what I'm capable of, you know, when I dig deep down inside and, you know, I'm just gonna have a lot of time on that mountain to remind myself exactly who Darby Allen is and what I'm capable of. And once I come back down, you know, I'm going to be a whole different beast and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But uh, I just I feel like right now is the perfect time for Sting to retire. You know, he has every he, he's just he's been rocking. So let's just end it while we're hot. Absolutely. And, yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned you're you're about to get ready to try uh, climb Mount Everest. How's the training going for that while uh, wrestling at the same time? Yeah. I don't think anybody will truly understand how hard this has been. If everyone thinks I'm like super reckless and I just just go to Mount Everest because the Mountain experience, so I signed up. Uh, I signed up with the company. The idea came late last spring, so I signed up with a company uh, called Adventure Consultants. They're like the premier Mount Everest climbing group. And then I said, I want to climb Mount Everest. And they're like, Do you have any experience climbing? And I say, Absolutely not. And then they're <laughs> like, they're like, Well, the next climbing is happening in April, so you got six months to train for the biggest mountain in the world with zero mountain experience on top of all the crazy stuff you do in the ring and outside the ring, we're going to be honest. We don't think you capable of that. And I said, all right, well, put me up to the test. Any training program you have, we're like, let's go. And I flew to so many different countries and so many different mountains I've climbed it's been gnarly. It's been so gnarly. I, I could talk for an hour about what happened on those mountains and how gnarly people were coughing up blood, crap in their pants. Meanwhile, I felt completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was just tired. And then there's people that have climbed mountains, throwing up blood, all this stuff. And, and they're like, how, what's your secret? And I was like, I honestly have no idea i just think it's, <laughs> it's it's like what i put my body through for my whole life and it got me ready for these moments like that so um it, it's been crazy but by the end of the training i finished everything with flying colors and they told me you have what it takes to climb mount everest so the only thing that's going to stop me is either, either an avalanche or a yeti so uh we'll see We'll see. We'll see. Well, we don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got a you got a lot of things going on today. Uh, it's it's great to have you back on the show. I know my seven year old is going to get excited about this when I show him the clip of me showing you his action figure. <laughs> um, and uh, Darby, we wish you nothing but the best. Good luck with uh, climbing Mount Everest. And once you accomplish that, we get you back here, and we uh, we we could spend an hour talking about you climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> <for> me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a gnarly one, man. It's gonna be gnarly. So.